Hi guys, I hope you're well. I'm Tambi and please go check out my channel because I have been so consistent lately, literally uploading every single Monday and I've got some good videos. Well, I think they're quite good. So definitely go check them out and yeah, don't forget to subscribe to my channel, please. So last month I started a series called Morals of the Month and it basically just talks through all my highs, my lows, things I've learned from the month and it's just a way for me to like reflect out loud with you guys because I think I've just been struggling to like vlog everything and like keep you guys up to date on everything going on. So this is just a very nice way for me at the end of each month to sit down and give you a life update. Also it is therapy for me and you guys seem to really like it last month. So I'm going to try to be really consistent with this series going forward. So this month we're going to be talking about March and March was an extremely busy month for me. Lots of you who follow me on Instagram will know and a little plug, follow me on there if you don't. It was my brother's wedding, I had my BBC Asian Network show, I went to Milan. So a lot happened in March and I personally think it was such a great positive month for me. So I'm really excited to be talking about all of those things in this video. The first thing I wanted to start with is my Gujarati or Gujarati videos and it's quite unusual that I'm bringing this up in a morals of the month but actually it's been such a huge part of this month for me. So at the beginning of the month I started releasing TikToks where I was practicing how to speak in Gujarati which is my mother tongue because I am Gujarati. I just basically wanted to start practicing how to speak it again and it was like a trend on TikTok so I just kept doing it and those videos just kept blowing up and doing so well and it just encouraged me to keep going and I'm slacking a little bit but I do want to get back on it but a lot of morals and lessons I've learned from doing that and I think the first thing when I was reflecting about this was the fact that when I was younger I was like not ashamed but I think people who've grown up in the UK can relate to this like you're a little bit embarrassed of being Indian like I never fully embraced my culture and was so proud to be brown growing up because I was always an ethnic minority at schools like I was always the only brown person in my sports team it wasn't that I was like bullied or ever experienced racism I was never like I never owned it because it was just never the majority and I always was trying to fit in with everyone else and I never just felt like proud to be like Gujarati and you know sometimes when my mum would pick me up from school and they'd be like Asian Network or Sunrise Radio in the car, I'd like quickly change it because my friends were coming in the car. Or when she'd speak to me in Gujarati in the car, I'd be like embarrassed. I'd be like, Mom, like you need to speak in English. So I realized that growing up, I was like always a bit like embarrassed and like hiding that part of me. And definitely over the last like, I'd say three years, I've really learned to like love our culture and learn so much more about my heritage and being brown and South Asian and how important it is to own that and be proud of it and use it as like an advantage and I want to really increase representation of that. So yeah, now that I'm like speaking in Gujarati on TikTok, on the Asian network, I'm so proud of myself that I've actually started owning that part of me and being proud of it and showing it off instead of like trying to hide it away. And yeah, my Gujarati definitely needs work. I'm not afraid to admit that. And a lot of people on the internet are rinsing me for it. I can't lie. But I'm just like proud that I'm still going and I'm trying. And the fact that some people have actually said that it's helping them learn, it also just makes me happy that like we're all kind of learning together. Because a lot of people my age who grew up in the UK don't know how to read or write or properly speak Gujarati. And we only just get by by doing it with our grandparents. So actually the fact that I've been able to help other people get back in touch with the language and also just a source of entertainment for people who think I'm really bad. Like, I'll take it. I think it's been really good. So if anyone is out there and you know they can somewhat speak their mother tongue but they don't really know how and they want to practice, just do it. What have you got to lose? It's been such a fun and great learning experience for me this month and hopefully I can keep it up going forward. Secondly, I want to talk about my BBC Asian Network radio show and it's actually absolutely insane that I can say I had a radio show on the BBC. I just feel so blessed but yeah, I don't think it's even hit me still because everything happened so quickly but for those of you who don't know, there is a programme on the Asian Network 
called Asia Network Represent. And it's essentially a way of getting in new and young voices, new presenters, people who are looking to go down that road, people who might have some presenting experience on other radios, people like me who don't have any presenting experience. But it's essentially a program where you get a month residency, so every Sunday night, so you get four shows in the month. And you basically can do two hours of music and talking about anything you want. They just want you to be able to show what you can bring and what you're about, your story and your personality, which is so nice because I just had the freedom to basically talk about whatever I wanted, play whatever music I wanted and really just show what I'm about. If anyone is wondering how I got it, so probably about last summer, so nearly a year now, the head of the BBC Asian Network reached out to me because he wanted to see if I was interested in doing any radio, doing any presenting and kind of bring me on to the Asian Network, which is really cool that he almost like saw me, saw what I was doing and kind of like scouted me in that way. We had so many back and forth conversations like trying to get me into the studio to do some pilots and at the same time I had a few other producers reach out to almost like pitch their ideas of putting me on shows to commissioners who then kind of like select what type of shows and what type of presenters go on the network. So I was in conversations with I would say like three or four different people as well as the head of the network and then the easiest thing that they said to do was basically to submit a demo via this represent the program, which is what I did and really, really fortunate enough to get it and be offered the role for the first month to open it all up. So yeah, I'm really honored to have been selected and also been given that opportunity because I guess it's one of those things that you don't know if you'll be good at it or you'll enjoy it unless you try it. And honestly, that experience was a once in a lifetime experience. It was incredible. It was amazing to see how many of my friends and my family and grandparents and strangers on the internet were listening to my show I said it made them feel empowered it made them feel motivated and doing all of those things that I already do on social media moving on to the radio was just such a cool experience but the moral of the month here for this is that just try everything once you could be really bad at something you could hate it but for me it was all about not having any regrets and not wondering what if I tried that. That opportunity came from me putting myself out there and trying loads of new opportunities and then taking on this one and I haven't looked back since. And if you're watching this video, you're very, very lucky to know that I've actually been offered my first live gig with the BBC Asian Network, which shows like all my hard work for those four shows paid off. And hopefully you'll be hearing more of me on the radio soon. So yeah, I've got a live show coming up in May and of course, Follow me on Instagram if you want to know when it is. So that is really exciting and it's definitely a path that I'm exploring and going down and seeing what my options are. The third thing I want to talk about, which is something I mentioned at the start of this video, is that I went on a girls holiday to Milan. We went for literally 48 hours, we just went for a weekend, but oh my gosh, it was one of the best holidays I've had in a very long time. And we booked this one quite like on a whim, I went with three of my best friends and I've actually got like a girls chat video where we just sit on a sofa talking about friendships, if you want to check that out, please do. And I've also got my Milan vlog, so if you haven't seen that, also have a look at that. But yeah, it was just a really, really good holiday. What I would say is that I definitely had some like anxiety about going on a girls holiday before this trip because I've been on girls holidays before. Sometimes it can get a little bit like you're all up in each other's spaces. You know, you don't really know the dynamic of everyone until you live with them. And yeah, you might be really good friends in the outside world, but like going on holiday with people is a different ball game. So I was a bit worried, like what if we didn't get on or what if I annoyed them or, you know, just like normal worries that you would have. But actually, I had the best time and it was one of the best holidays. And I think a big part of it was normally when I go on holidays, like I personally love taking pictures, not of myself, just like of things. I love capturing moments and just making memories, like pictures with my friends. and. A lot of the time, like, friends that I used to have in the past didn't really like that and always, like, almost made fun of me for it, made fun of the whole influencing thing, which was never nice because actually it's not a negative thing and I'll bang on about it until you guys agree with me. But it was nice going on holiday with three other content creators. Now, we're all completely different types of creators with completely different niches, but it was nice that we all appreciated taking content and, like, taking pictures and videos, but in a fun way. It wasn't like it took over the holiday and it wasn't like... 
we weren't present in the moment at all. Pooja's an amazing photographer and Dev and Actor take amazing videos, like their B-rolls on their YouTube videos are incredible. So the fact that everyone had their own little skill sets and everyone was kind of working alongside one another as content creators on this holiday, but we were all still having an amazing time and like having fun as friends. It was just such a unique experience and it made me realize that in the past, I should never have been made to feel bad or guilty for taking pictures and doing things I liked when I was on holiday. And actually maybe I was just going on holiday with the wrong people. Also going on holiday is a really nice way to spend time with your friends as opposed to just like a meal or a night out. Like you actually get to spend quality time and make quality memories. When you're out for dinner, like it goes so quickly or when you're on a night out, like you don't really get to sit down and like catch up and like get to know each other on a deeper level. And I found that this holiday really allowed us to do that, which was so nice because in five years time like we'll have those really really special moments and memories to look back on as opposed to like a drunk night out which is fun but it's just very different to a holiday so again i would recommend like going on holiday with your friends if you can and last but not least the thing i wanted to talk about in this month's moral of the month is my brother's wedding so <laughs> you probably do know by now because it's literally all over my tiktok and my instagram but my brother got married in march and it's something that I've been looking forward to for a really long time. Him and his now wife, which is crazy to say, they've been together for eight years. And so she's already very much part of our family. I love her. She's such a nice sister role model for me because I only have one brother. And yeah, it was just such a lovely weekend. Well, actually it was like over two and a half weeks because they were meant to have their wedding abroad in Sri Lanka. And I hope they don't mind me saying this, but unfortunately because of COVID, they decided six months ago to just have it all in London because we were having family members fly from literally all over the world. There were people from Australia, Kenya, America, um, Argentina at the wedding. So it was just easier to have it in London as opposed to Sri Lanka, which right now, COVID is really bad there and it's on like a full on lockdown. So we're really lucky that we moved it here. It was just such a fun experience. Now, obviously I love Indian weddings as I'm sure a lot of you do too. They are big, they are flamboyant, they are fun and just good vibes, good music, good outfits. And I just really couldn't ask for anything more from a wedding, but being your brother's wedding and um, it's just like all the more special. And it was such a nice time to bring loads of our family and friends together who we obviously haven't seen in ages because of COVID, but also it was a really nice way to meet her side of the family and her family who've come from other parts of the world. I'm not gonna be sharing much of the bride and groom and like personal things at the wedding because I believe like weddings are meant to be like special occasions for that couple. And my brother and his sister-in-law aren't, his sister-in-law, my sister-in-law, aren't like big public social media people at all. So I wanted to respect their privacy with me having quite a big public profile. So yeah, there's not gonna be much of them on there unfortunately, but they both did look beautiful at all of the events and they had an incredible time too. The one thing that I would say though about weddings that no one talks about is that it is so exhausting. Literally, I think I'm gonna need to sleep for a week after the last two weeks because the reception was last night. I'm knackered. So if you're having a close family wedding, I suggest you sleep properly for a month in advance to prepare yourself fully for the week or two weeks of chaos and antics because you're running around doing all sorts of things your outfits are so heavy and it is so worth it but it is really exhausting so rest up if you've got a close family wedding coming up last thing i wanted to say about the wedding was make sure you're present in the moment and it's so easy for us to get caught up in like taking pictures and taking videos and don't get me wrong i definitely did because i wanted to cherish the moment but i was really really wary about just being present in the moment and spending time with my friends and family and i didn't really vlog anything for that reason and i'm really sorry because i know you guys probably wanted a vlog from me and i was thinking about it but when i was there genuinely i did not pick up my phone to film very much but yeah that is all i have to say for my march morals of the month i hope you guys enjoyed the video and look forward to april april is obviously spring like the days are getting longer it's getting a little bit warmer despite like it snowing this week which is slightly questionable i'm looking forward to what next month brings and again lots of fun cool things coming up so stay tuned please don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you want to keep up with all of that follow me on instagram and tiktok if you wish and i'll catch you guys in the next video lots of love bye